Next on the news here, we've got news courtesy of Mixmag, which I thought was pretty cool. It says, Travis Scott and Skepta to headline new Virgil Abra honouring festival in Miami. I immediately thought about it. So I was like, oh yeah, damn, it's actually a one year anniversary coming up, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken, Virgil Abloh passed away like the end of November, beginning of December. So his one year anniversary of his passing is coming up. One year already. And it feels crazy because I remember when I used to keep looking at Virgil's Instagram story, which I absolutely love. And I'm kind of, I feel like maybe that's where I decided to carry the torch in terms of just uploading mad Instagram stories. Because I think I remember when he passed, one of the things I said I remember I would do as a sort of way to honour his legacy and the kind of impact I felt like he had on my life in terms of what he did, his outsized impact, I feel like was to do just a million projects at once. And I feel like I've kind of done some of that, but also the Instagram stories thing. And also, the you know, another thing also that I've learned from him that I've kind of done, as to kind of carry the torch, just following people who follow you. Rags, if you follow me and you're cool and we have a little interaction, bang, I'll follow. Do you know what I mean? I'm not tight with a follow. Um, replying to everything, like especially if I see stuff online. But let's continue. Um, it says as follows. A brand new festival honoring the late DJ and fashion designer and entrepreneur Virgil Abloh is set to go ahead for the first time this December in Miami. Mirror Mirror Festival will take place across one day, December 3rd, at the Miami FPL Solar Amphitheater at Bayfront Park as part of the city's up-and-coming Art Basel affair. Raw Art Basel. That's always a, that's always a indicator that the year's ending, isn't it? When Art Basel comes around. Like all year round, flipping influence a toy, you're going to all these different places and then boom, Art Basel, Miami, you're kind of chilling out with a Negroni, looking at people in your free Stussy garms, loving life. Travis Scott and Skepta have been announced as the headliners for the debut event, who will then be joined by artists that include Yves, Yves, um, Yves Tumor, who I'm a big fan of, Bambi, who I featured, I think, before regarding that topic regarding the Blessed Madonna or the Black Madonna, I think so, Pedro, I'm not too sure who that is, Venus X, who I actually booked once for a club night in Dalston many moons ago, and she cancelled last minute, damn you, Venus, damn you, um, A-Side, Rampa, and Benji B. Benji B, I, I don't know, man love hate relationship with benji b when i see my man play ama piano i just had to turn off but we continue uh, mirror mirror was set up to honor the of uh, the late great artist virgil abloh who passed away in november 2021 um following a private battle with cancer the festival is set to commemorate abloh by championing artists close to him shannon abloh virgil's wife and ceo of virgil abloh securities said in a press release virgil had the ability to bring everyone together to create magic 100 percent agree with that with his close collaborations we wanted to bring everyone together to celebrate virgil's legacy his passion and his care for others he believed his work was championing others and will continue to work to support the youth in the arts and and launch of the Virgil Abloh Foundation in 2023. The creation of the Mirror Mirror um, was helped by the long-running collaborator and friend Benji B, who, with all profits going towards the Virgil Abloh Foundation, set up the next launch next year. Amazing. Mirror Mirror was or has also seen Travis Scott return to the festival stage. His first headline show. Wow, true. Since the 2021 disaster, uh, the, uh, the Asheville tragedy. Sorry. Next year, Travis is also slated to headline Rolling Loud Festival in California. Tickets for Mirror Mirror go on sale November 23rd. Grab yours here crazy right um yeah what was i gonna say it's mad isn't it time goes by so quickly which i think is why it's really important part of legs virgil's legacy is the fact that he did so much in such a short time like you think he passed away in his early 40s and he was in my opinion just getting started that was the kind of sad part about his passing like the somewhat so it's all sad, but the real sad part for me was that the fact that he was finally coming into his true powers, like less so about the products and more so about what he represented and what he was doing by his actions, right? He was kind of leading um, by example. A good, a good flipping example to kind of think back on was the outrage around him donating $50 or whatever it may be um, for that BLM thing. He got called out for it. Maybe it was overreaction. Maybe it was justified. We're not here to pontificate about that, but his reaction to it was incredible. All those trust and things that he set up and foundations came, I feel like, and again, maybe I'm misremembering it, but I feel like it came off the back of that call out because of what he donated um, during the whole George, post George Floyd sort of um, unfortunate passing and tragedy at the hands of police brutality and also the after effects with BLM and what not happened afterwards. He responded in the best way possible. He put his money where his mouth is and now in his passing, unfortunate as it is, is now got this legacy that will live long, long past, even us passing. His name will be forever tied to the fact that he is 
um, you know, essentially the person who is sponsoring, helping, mentoring, and providing a platform for these young designers or young people who just want to do cool things. He's basically provided that platform and foundation for them. And it's incredible to see. I also love the fact that Shannon Ablo is getting involved, his wife, who by all accounts purposely wanted to stay away from the limelight, kind of stay behind the scenes. And I read some other articles that said she'd always been involved in his business. She just was never really kind of out there in the front with it, which is absolutely brilliant. And I remember from the short time that I worked with Virgil Abloh doing that online streetwear program um, that I remember one of the kind of sticking points and the struggles and the hassles and the annoyance that we had in our company was that he kept on jetting back to Chicago. He'd come to Europe to do a project or come to look over a collection or do some meetings and he'd legitimately get back on a plane to go and hang out with his family again, like back and forth. It was absolutely insane. So it wasn't even like he was one of these other kind of, you know, dirt bag, scumbag people who had a family at home but had a completely different life outside of that. When they were in Paris, they were city boy doing all sorts of madness. No, he was going back and forth to visit his family on a, const on a constant basis. I can't imagine... The amount of air miles he must have had before he passed away must have been absolutely insane. But yeah, so I think that's his kind of everlasting legacy. And this festival being set up, I think is also a good idea. Because again, Virgil was always somebody that I feel like in some cases loved the after party more than the show. Or maybe loved the, yeah, maybe loved the after party more than the show because he felt like somebody that loved the ideation and the kind of design process and the collaborative nature of that in terms of the, the WhatsApp groups and the sketches and all that and being in the studio. But the show was a little bit of an anti climax because it came and it went. But then the creating the lasting moments were kind of the pre-show and also the after parties where you get to meet people, touch bases, hug, you know, hang out, play some great tunes, have that moment on Instagram, maybe politic and link with, um, link and build with some people. All that stuff was probably stuff that he probably lived for and that was a part of his life force. And if anything, those were the things that people look forward to as well when they go to Paris. If they went to go to Off-White Show, oh, what's the, where's the after party? Um, where can we go? Where can we go after? Where's he DJing? Where's that happening? Blah, 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 blah. And it kind of went on and on and on. So I feel like this is probably the best way to honour him with having these sort of celebrations, especially at a place like Art Basel, something that Virgil would have obviously done himself, I think, easily um, had something going on in that regard. But yeah, it's just sad to see that it's one year gone since the great man passed away. Um, I feel like he didn't get his flowers when he was around, unfortunately. I feel like a lot of people clearly, you know, went out of their way to try to rewrite history like they were always supporting the guy after his passing, which is unfortunate. But in the end, it's still welcomed. I feel like, you know, regardless if you are kind of acting brand new or pretending like you didn't like the guy when he was around, the fact that now he's passed and people are honoring him and giving him respect that he deserves is still great. Because these kids, when they, you know, grow up, they'll see all these amazing flowers, all these, you know, influential people in the industry, giving him his flowers, saying great things about him, a community of fans and whatnot that, you know, stretches far and wide and their own kind of, you know, family and friends close to them that are supporting them. All of that will still be beneficial, I think, going through in the future. So it's all well and good. But, you know, thoughts and feelings go out to Shannon Ablo and the kids. Hope they're doing well and they're being strong and people around them are supporting them. Thoughts and feelings go out to Virgil Abloh's close friends because I'm sure this next week and so will be bittersweet celebrating the guy's memory but also knowing that he's not here anymore is going to really hurt but in general you know he curated such a lasting legacy in such a short space of time he led by example um, by all accounts was a genuine nice guy there's not a lot of them in the scene trust me I've been around these people some of them are absolute cunts and the fact that he wasn't and he had every right to be given the amount of clout success the friends that he has, his network, he could definitely be one of those guys and it would be somewhat understandable. But he went out of his way to be nice, went out of his way to be kind, went out of his way to have manners, to be personable, right? The kind of guy that would shake your hand and not give you that scene, like loose kind of wet fish shake. He would shake your hand, look you in the eye and say, good, whatever, compliment you on something that you're wearing, exchange a couple of DMs, leave you a comment on your flipping Instagram like he did on mine. Do you know what I mean? Just be nice. Like you people on his stature don't do that. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they hardly double tap a comment if you leave it on an Instagram account. The fact that you'll leave a comment and emoji, double tap or like, or even share stuff on your stories, it goes a long way. I know it's not anything, it doesn't mean nothing in the grand scheme of things, but think of the people that are in the scene that don't do that. He did that and went out of his way to do that. So I feel like that is something that I've kind of learned and kind of decided to embrace in my own life. Even though I did it anyway, but in terms of saying, hey, if this guy that reached the heights of the all heights can be nice and decent and not get too big for his britches and not be just an overall megalomaniac, then I have no right to be it, especially at what I'm doing. 
Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm nowhere near the success level that he's at. Obviously, I hope to get there and surpass it. But at the current moment, I have no reason to act brand new if that's, if this guy didn't act brand new. And, you know, I just love the fact that in general as well, after his passing, no one had a bad word to say about him personally. Everyone can say what they want about the product, can say what they want about the clothes, can say what they want about the activations, collaborations, maybe the views. But him as a human being, everyone had great things to say about him. Legitimate great things. And I absolutely love that. So RIP Virgil Abloh, um, gone but never forgotten. And thoughts and feelings go out to his family and friends. It's gonna, definitely going to be a tough time, you know, celebrating or remembering him um, one year gone. But again, he's left a lasting legacy that I feel like will stretch on way, 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 way past, um, you know, his natural life, in my opinion. But 